We now need to move on to setting up the superannuation for Harry. The superannuation fund that will come up is our default fund. If Harry wants to have his own superannuation fund or has a separate account with another organisation, you can print the superannuation choice form for him. He needs to complete it and bring it back to you with details of that superannuation fund and his superannuation guarantee contributions will then go to that particular organisation. In order to get him superannuation guarantee, we just click superannuation guarantee. If I click on the white arrow, I can see there that it is set up for 9% of his gross wages. It will be printed on the pay advice. It will not exceed $25,000 per year, which I believe currently to be the maximum. You may need to check this with your own taxation guru, consultant, whoever. And it needs to be calculated once eligible wages of $450 have been paid for the month. If the first week's wages or the first pay period's wages are less than 450 it will keep that amount in memory and as soon as it exceeds it, it will do an adjustment which takes into account the previous wages and will then work out at 9% on future increments. If I click OK, it will take me back to the superannuation screen. Some people require an amount to be taken out of their wages, such as employee additional. For example, people on a low wage are entitled to a superannuation co-contribution. They may decide to take out $10 a week from their wages so that at the end of the year they have contributed an extra $520 to their superannuation fund. If they do this out of their after-tax wages, as I understand it, the government will provide a co-contribution currently of the rate of $520 to go with it to their superannuation fund. There are other people on a much higher wage who like to salary sacrifice. You have somebody earning over $200,000 a year. Their normal superannuation guarantee will be $18,000 they may decide to top that up to 25000 and provide an extra 7000 out of their before-tax income to get to the maximum 25000 and have a mere take-home gross of 193000 Again, all I would need to do is to click the Salary Sacrifice button, click on the white arrow and I can have a look and see what it is, whether I put it in as a user-entered amount per pay period for an equals dollars per pay period or what. And I can also put in an equals limit for whatever it may be. Click OK. We'll now move on to the entitlements. Having set up the superannuation, we now need to set up the entitlements. If I click on entitlements, it will show me that we have holiday leave accrual and holiday leave accrual for monthlies, personal leave accrual and personal leave accrual for monthlies. Harry is entitled to holiday leave accrual and personal leave accrual. As we've seen earlier when we set up the payroll categories, the holiday leave accrual will give him 7.6923% of his gross hours, which will work out at four weeks per year for accrued leave. And for his personal leave, it will work it out two weeks per year, 3.84615% of his gross hours. As time passes by, we'll be able to go back into his personal file and we can see that in his year to date, these figures will start to increase as each pay period goes on. So we can have a look in here and see how much holiday leave or sick leave any person is entitled to at any time. And when we roll over a payroll, the amounts in there will be carried forward and appear in the carryover figure. Having set up the entitlements, we'll now move on and set up the deductions for Harry. Harry has decided he wants a few bob for a decent Christmas party. All we need to do is click in the box and if we look at the conditions for Christmas, We'll deduct $5 a week out of the, uh, his wages each pay period 
until it gets to a maximum of $100 for the year. He's got 26 weeks to Christmas. He should have the $100 comfortably. Click OK and it will now be set up for him. The next thing we need to set up, any employer expenses. At the moment, we're set up with only work cover as a, an expense. If I want to record how much it's going to cost me to pay the work cover each year, if I tick that, it will keep a running total of how much he's earned and therefore how much I should set aside to pay the work cover premium. We now need to set up Harry's taxes. We click on taxes. The first thing it will ask us is his tax file number. Every employee, when they start with you, needs to fill out the tax file number declaration form and also tell you what sort of taxes he is liable for. The tax file number is normally nine digits. We can fill that in. And also, we need to fill out the tax-free threshold or whatever he's liable for. If I click on the down arrow, it will bring up all the ones that are available to us, such as tax-free threshold, also whether he has a family supplement, a help debt, debt or both. And the bottom one there is the withholding variation if he's got anything else. If it's his second job and he's already applied for a tax-free threshold at the first employer, then he will go on to the no tax-free threshold up there. But assuming that he's just a straightforward employee and you're his only employer, most people have tax-free threshold. Click Use Tax Scale. He may also have some more rebates or he may have a reason for paying extra tax. The total rebates is an annual figure. That will be notified in a letter from the ATO saying that he has an extra rebate available to him for whatever reason and you will therefore put in the annual amount of that rebate. And assuming that he's on a weekly salary, one fifty seconds of uh, that rebate will be deducted from his gross and tax calculated accordingly. The extra tax figure is an extra tax per pay period. So if he's on weekly and he needs to pay an extra $520, then the extra tax will be an extra $10 per week per pay period. If he was on fortnightly, the figure would be $20 to get up to an extra tax figure of $520 per year. Having set Harry's taxes up, let's have a look at his standard pay. If I click on standard pay, it will tell me that in his normal pay, his base hourly is 38 hours, and his rate of $30 an hour is $1,140. Normally, he doesn't have holiday leave loading or holiday pay, or overtime, or sick pay. There's no bonus. His Christmas is a deduction that's calculated as is his taxes depending upon what his gross pay is. In the entitlements, the holiday leave accrual is a calculated figure. The personal leave accrual is a calculated figure. The work cover is a calculated figure. And the superannuation guarantee, 9% of his gross, is a calculated figure. His standard pay is a set up. If Harry, for example, did not work a regular 38 hours per week, but maybe was a part-time employee only working, say, 20 hours per week, we could change that 38 to a 20, and he would automatically be paid his 20 hours a week at $30 an hour, $600. If he was paid as a result of a time slip, we could actually bring that base hours back to zero and the timesheet hours would provide the amount that was going to go into his base hourly etc. We'll talk about pay slips in a later video. We could also look at his pay history. This is an area that should not be played around with. This is a record of what he has been paid and his other figures such as entitlements and employer expenses in dollar terms for July, August, September, all the months for the first, second, third and fourth quarter and also year to date. I would most strongly recommend that you do not change any of these figures. Let the system show you what's in there but do not try and change them. 
If we look at year to date, it would just show us what the year to date is. And the last element of his pay is the time billing. If we are using time as a basis to charge out to our clients for the amount of time that they worked, whether they be construction engineers or accountants or lawyers or whatever. We can set up an employee billing rate, which can of course be overridden on the bill. And we can also get a cost per hour of what it actually costs us to employ the person for their productive hours, which may not be the same as the actual amount that we pay them. These are used when we are using time billing. If I click OK, it would take me back to the main screen. But the next thing I want to do is to go to the payment details.